What's going on, guys? It's Legend of Two Games, repping for real fans, real talk. Day 18 without sports, about day 10 since I seen my barber. But that's neither here nor there, because as you can see, I'm kicking back in a quarantine cave, staying safe, staying hydrated as you should. Uh, but without further ado, I want to get into a sports topic that was brought to my attention by a good friend of mine. Shout out to my man, Jamal. Uh, we go way back to, to the high school days, and we international with it. Uh, also, check him out on IG um, with his food blog page. That's uh, Muff and Maul Eats. It's a dope page him and his sister have together. They've been traveling the world, giving you some real good breakdowns on different restaurants and food that they've tried. All right, so let's get into the topic. Um, it was brought to my attention. It's a good sports debate uh, whether or I should say which class was better. The 1984 NBA draft class, the 1996 NBA draft class, or the famous 2003 NBA draft class. All of these draft classes produce uh, some of the best players that we've ever seen. Uh, obviously, Michael Jordan was in one of these. LeBron James was in one of these. Kobe Bryant was in one of these. So those are three of the top 10 guys that we always debate on who is the best. And then there's some other guys sprinkled in there that are all-time greats as well. So without further ado, here goes my breakdown on it. At number three, I've got the 2003 NBA draft class that featured LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, and Chris Bosh. And here's why. Not to take anything away from those four guys in particular, but outside of those guys, the draft class gets very weak. The next notable name after those four guys were selected with the top five picks in the draft become Kurt Heinrich and David West. Now, both those guys, no knock to them. They were solid NBA players, but neither one of them were real uh, dominant forces in the league. David West went to two All-Star games. Kurt Heinrich never went to an All-Star game. And so even though they had solid careers, the draft fell off after D. Wade was selected number five. Uh, we know about all the accolades that LeBron has racked up. We know about all the success that he, D. Wade, and Chris Bosh had together in Miami. But I think that's what also hurts the significance or, or the place of this draft, I should say. Because if you take away the four years that they played together, Chris Bosh probably never goes to an NBA Finals. And that kind of weakens the argument that this class was the best. LeBron is an all-time great. He is on the Mount Rushmore of all-time greats in the NBA, at least in my opinion. Some may, may differ. I don't know what you've been watching, but he's on my list. And I think D-Wade is one of the greatest two guards that we've ever seen. But aside from those guys, again, it kind of falls off. Carmelo Anthony was and still is a world-class talent, but he never had the success those guys had. And so aside from those three guys and what they did, it's a massive drop-off. But I will say this, uh, and this is why I kind of debated if I should make them uh, first or possibly third. That's how close this race was. They did a lot for Olympic basketball and the way they brought back the Dream Team and obviously renamed it the Redeem Team, winning their gold medals and, and kind of putting it back on the map. That was significant for me. But again, this draft class outside of those guys, it was it was very weak. Those four guys helped do that. The rest of the class really didn't move anything forward for me. So that's at number three. At number two uh, is the 1996 class, which featured Kobe Bryant. And even though Kobe wasn't drafted number one in that uh, draft class, Allen Iverson was, the class was very, very strong. You had Kobe, you had AI, you had Ray Allen, you had Steve Nash, uh, which are featured in the picture. But then some other notable names and very good ball players there. Marcus Camby, who was a uh, NBA Defensive Player of the Year and a four-time first all defensive team in the NBA. You had Stephon Marbury, you had Jermaine O'Neal, you had Derek Fisher, you had Antoine Walker. So you had a lot of all-star and really good ball players in that draft class. The reason for me that that class becomes number two is outside of the success that Kobe and Ray Allen had winning championships, it really dried out. Allen Iverson led his team to a finals, obviously lost to Kobe and Derek Fisher. Uh, Marcus Camby was a contributor on a Knicks team that went to the finals in 2000 and lost to the Spurs, but never got back. Steve Nash never made a finals. Antoine Walker made a finals way later on in his career when he was just a journeyman coming off the bench for the Heat. Um, obviously, we know the issues that Stephon Marbury started having, and he never got to see that success in the United States the way he saw it over in China. So to me, Fisher and Bryant carry the overall success of the draft because they were able to win their championships in L.A. The rest of the class didn't. Also, this particular draft class was why we end up having the Redeem team. Allen Iverson, uh, Marcus Camby, Ray Allen, those guys were part of an Olympic team that didn't do very well. I believe Antoine Walker was on that team as well. They didn't do very well. They actually didn't even medal. And that's what led to uh, the Olympic Committee and uh, American basketball kind of changing the dynamics of how they selected the team. 
So those two things kind of held it back. Kobe, obviously legendary player in the game. We mourn his death and we see the impact he had on the game coming out of high school. But he is not strong enough to carry this class to number one. To me, they're number two. And which leaves, to me, the, the greatest uh, draft class that we've seen to date, which is the 1984 class, headlined by Kim Olajuwon at number one. Obviously, Michael Jordan at number three. Some will argue that this class wasn't as strong. I disagree. I think the class was pretty strong. And I also look at the dynamics of the league when, when this draft took place. Michael Jordan really shifted everything. We know that. But Hakeem Olajuwon has such a great impact on the game from day one. He not only led the Rockets to two finals later on in his career, but he helped get them to a finals within his second year in the league. And he really changed the Western Conference from the day he stepped into to his Houston Rockets uniform. John Stockton, career NBA assist leader, he changed the culture in Utah. They went to 19 straight playoff appearances the moment he touched down there. Charles Barkley, one of the smallest power forwards ever played a game up until that time, again, impacted the game in a way that we had never seen before. He also went to Phoenix and helped lead them to a finals, which they ultimately lost to Michael Jordan. Um, and also, I like this class the most because of their contributions to Olympic basketball, as I, as I mentioned. Stockton, Barkley, and Jordan, of course, were part of the original dream team, uh, the historic dream team that kind of changed the culture around American basketball. Those guys, I think their impact to the game. You also throw in the fact that Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon, Barkley, and Stockton, the top four players from that draft, all together went to 11 NBA Finals. They won eight of those 11 NBA Finals. The only losses on those resumes that uh, within the NBA Final were to Michael Jordan, Stockton losing twice, Barkley losing once. Other than that, again, we're talking eight championships and 11 appearances from your top guys. It is the best class, uh, but I want to hear your thoughts on it, man. Let me know what you guys think, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like, and ultimately, where would you rank the classes? Again, I've got 84 at number one, I've got 96 at number two, and I got 2003 at number three, but you could debate it either way because, again, I like that 2003 class. I just don't like it as much as I like the other two. Let me know what you think, man. Real fans, real talk. We appreciate the support. We can't get, wait to get back on the air for you guys. Take care. What's good? It's your boy Daylight. You're now tuned in with realfansrealtalk.com. Bye, y'all. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought.